What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Summer Career Mode. This is episode number 24 and we start today's of stuff on the back of our win over Everton in the EFL Cup last 16 to put us through to the, uh, sorry, for the last 32 to put us through to last 16 as you can see. We've been drawn against the holders. Uh, yeah, Liverpool won it last season. Beat Chelsea both in the game and in real life. I love the realism there. Uh, they won the final last season in the game, beating Chelsea by a goal to nil. We've got them in the last 16. So, you know, we had a great cup run last season in the FA Cup, going all the way to win it in the EFL Cup. Got to the last 16. We were seconds away from making it through to the quarters when Brighton scored a stoppage time leveller and then won the shootout. But I can't see us getting past Liverpool. Yep, I think our progress is going to end uh, <laughs> in the last 16, just like last six, uh, last season. Anyway, uh, heading into today's episode, guys, just for a brief one to talk about this, um, just to break away from the immersion here. Oh, man, I'm, I'm in pain. I'm, I'm in pain right now. Um, so I'm, I'm, I've got braces right now. Now, for those of you who know a little bit about me personally, you'll know that I've always had bad teeth. I, I never tried to deny it. You guys saw it in full display a few years ago. I've got very bad teeth. I've always had bad teeth. Even as a kid, I always had really, really bad, goofy teeth, you know. Um, and finally, after so many years, I got braces put on um, back in December of 2021. Uh, the treatment hadn't been very painful up until now you know obviously anyone that's had braces before knows they they get tightened up about once every month every month and a half you know um depending on how severe the, the, the teeth need altering and obviously the length of the treatment depends on how bad the teeth are at the start as well i've been told i'm going to take two full years until my treatment is completed so i've got another 12 to 18 months to go according to my orthodontist um so for those that have braces before, maybe you finish treatment, maybe you're going through it. Uh, there might have been a time where you had to have bands put on your teeth to close gaps. Um, and uh, you might, if you're very unlucky like me, <laughs> have had to have these uh, metal rings put around your teeth as well. Now, uh, my wisdom teeth, I know I'm 29 years old, so it's a very uh, old age for wisdom teeth to come through. But my wisdom teeth have uh, started coming through. And um, unfortunately, because of the uh, the the negative jaw I have, the poor jaw I have, um, basically I need jaw surgery to go alongside braces as well. Um, there's not enough space in my teeth for the wisdom teeth to come through, um, to come through normally at the correct angle. So for those of you that have had your wisdom teeth come through or they're coming through, you, you might notice, I think, I think I read something like it's a third of people that have their wisdom teeth come through, come through at a poor angle, because there's not enough space for the teeth right at the back, the jaw and the teeth is too compacted. My left wisdom tooth is coming through at basically like a 45 degree angle. It's it's tipped half onto its side. So it's coming through <laughs> at a really, really bad angle. So uh, my orthodontist has had to wrap a ring around it with the brace. Basically, if I bite down normally, I bite down on the brace bracket because of the way the tooth is tipped onto its side, uh, mostly at 45 degree angle. So when I bite down, I'm biting down onto the brace bracket on that left bottom wisdom tooth. And uh, my orthodontist has put a ring around it with a brace to try and pull it back up to a, you know, stood up um, sort of position, if you will, like the rest of the teeth too. Um, oh my God. Eating is really painful. And swallowing is really painful. And I'll be honest, talking is not much better either. All I can say is this, if you've had wisdom teeth compacted coming through like I have right now, I sympathise with you that the pain is ridiculous, man. I never used to fear going to the dentist. You know, that's a common fear for a lot of people, you know, going to the dentist. I never feared it. I never feared it, even though I had bad teeth as a kid. I'm not looking forward to going back to my orthodontist <laughs> next month. Man, oh man, this is painful. Still, anyway, heading into today's episode here. Well, after beating Fulham in the episode opener today, how about this? Europa League, match day two. Applewell away in Cyprus. We are thrashed by Marseille on match day one. I picked a very strong lineup for our trip here to Applewell. But goodness, we were gifted the worst own goal ever to start the game off. Yep, Simon Scafe sleeps in Crystal Palace pyjamas. Oh, mate, he just made a brilliant save. Pass play back to him. And you've just seen one of the worst own goals ever. Just booted the ball into the back of his own net. But despite that ridiculous helping hand, despite that really poor own goal, Fatima is. 
matter. We were running this show in the first half. Own goal or not, we were going to lead at the break and we knew we'd win this game as well. Uh, Wilfred Zahar bagged our second and third goals. We were leading by three at half time. Absolutely dominant. And I knew despite the loss to Marseille on match day one, our first away night in Europe was going to be a victory. We would lose our clean sheet. Uh, Dean just picked up his first of the season in the league against Fulham. We lost it here on Thursday night. Chip over him into the back of the net. But despite Apoel getting a consolation, I knew it would probably be nothing other than that. We were running the show. We were getting chance after chance. Out of 11 minutes on the clock, a chance to make it four, which we would do. The new toffee, Dwight McNeil. He's just signed for Everton. Now, we knew that McNeil was going to leave Burnley at some point, right? I mean, everyone knew that with Burnley having a major rebuild for the upcoming season, all the players leaving, Tarkowski, Ben Mee, Nick Pope, their call was being blown up. Dwight McNeil is going to go at some point, and it's Everton who have won the race for him. The three teams that were most uh, linked were Everton, Crystal Palace, and also Aston Villa as well. The Toffees won the race. He's now going to be playing under Frank Lampard for next season. So McNeil, now a new Everton player, he scored our fourth goal, and there were two minutes to go. Game was done. We scored our three goal lead, and we bagged the fifth as well. Matata gets our fifth. Final score in Cyprus, Apwell 1, Crystal Palace 5. Yep, back on track there. Nice to see it. The, the, the thrashing by Marseille on match day one was a, was a wake-up call. I went into that Europa League group opener, scored the first goal of the game, and thought, oh, yeah, piece of cake. We're going to dominate this group. Marseille had other plans, but good to get back on track on match day two. Third away through the group, as you can see, Spider Prague bottom with one, Marseille top with four, us and Applewell both have three points each. The key there is we've won big in our first of two games against Applewell. Now, I said before, I think Marseille are going to top the group. I do. Even the third of the way through, we're only a point behind, but I think they'll still top the group, especially after their big win against us on match day one. But the key is making sure we've got a better head-to-head -head record than Applewell and Spars Prague as well. So far, so good. Won one, of, one of the first four games against the two teams there. And one big as well. Still for the second game of today's episode as we now enter October. So the fixtures coming in this month here. Big, big games. That Sparta Prague game is going to be really important for Europa League qualification. And we start off with Southampton. Uh, the team, of course, we beat last year in the FA Cup semi final on our way to winning the whole thing. Uh, taking on Ralph Haston Huttel's side. I've got to say, Southampton are, Southampton are such an interesting team, aren't they? Because, you know, every, every single year. And I'm talking now in real life. There always seems to be this real unknown with Southampton. Every single summer, you think they could be in a relegation scrap. Or they could battle for Europe. Or they could finish in the table. They're just one of those teams. So you just don't really know what to expect in pre-season. The season unfolds. And any of those three things could happen. I'm excited to see how they get on next season under uh, Hassan Hull. But it's, it's true, isn't it? Southampton, they're just such, a, such an interesting team. You can never really predict what they're going to do year after year. But taking them on here at Selhurst Park, they took the opening goal despite the fact we've been the better team. And right before the break, we got ourselves back on their terms, deservedly so as well. Eduard storming down left-hand side, rolls it across, and Wilfred Zaha, who got injured earlier, turns in from close range and scores our leveler. Second of the season in the league. He's also scored a couple in Europe as well. Wilfred Zaha equalises for us, puts us back on double terms. And even, even on one leg, sorry, it's the silver that got the assist. Even on one leg, Wilfred Zaha is, is just my guy. He just always seems to get the job done. He is our most important player. And he didn't just score our first goal, he set up our second, despite playing with a knock as well. Rolls it through, odds on, Eduard makes it 2-1, game turned on its head, then late on, still leading by one, looking to close the game out, a chance to make it 3-1, will it down the right-hand side, eventually rolls it through to Max Ahrens, turned it, timed it perfectly, keeps himself on, ball across to the middle, and from seven yards out, this is why I've signed him. Josh De Silva, set up our first goal, scores our third. This guy just never runs out of energy. And I talk about it all the time. When you've got players that are naturally fit with high stamina, it means that even in the latter stages, they're not going to be gassed and operating at a lower level. They'll still be able to give you everything and pop up in the area when it matters most. For a leveler, a winner, or in the case of this game here, a dagger. Exactly what happens to Silver with the third goal. Wraps it up. Crystal Palace 3. Southampton 1. And this guy just dominated the midfield throughout the entire game. Ran the show from the first minute to last. And, you know, I, I know I sound like a bit of a broken record when I say this sort of stuff. But I really do believe every team needs that. Every team needs a player through the middle of their park who just runs. 
He runs, he runs, he runs, and then he runs some more as well. You just, you just need players like that to chase balls for 90 minutes. Plus stoppage time as well. The physical stamina and fitness of the game at the top tier can sometimes be the difference in late game situations between wins, losses and draws. And De Silva proved that in that game right there. Final score, 0-0. No, no. And uh, sorry, <laughs> final score, 3-1. And a big win there as a good little streak gets extended for Crystal Palace. But our final game of today's episode, Brighton away at the Amex, aiming to extend our good start in the Premier League. 35 minutes into a derby clash here against Graham Potter's side. Berta Ramo scored the opener. And real quickly, guys, if you're looking for a good budget striker in this year's FIFA career mode, Berta Ramo. He's the young Argentine. You can get him for a cheap deal from the Argentine country as well. From Argentina. <laughs> the Argentine country. From Argentina as well. And he grows really nicely too. As a starting striker, he's good enough for a mid-table Premier League side. And he grows to the mid-80s as well. Definitely pick him up. He's a bargain buy in this year's FIFA career mode. He opened the scoring, but we were still down by a goal in the second half. Despite the fact I've been the better team. I missed a sitter with a Brett Gize. And then Dwight McNeil was denied by Robert Sanchez on a 1-1. -on -one. We were still trading by a goal. Normally goals aren't a problem for me. But in this game, I just couldn't hit the back of the net. But I felt if I kept on going, I kept on pushing. Kept on looking for that level. I'll get it. And with 15 minutes to go, odds on Eduard Rose through Dwight McNeil. And if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. I messed up the one-on-one -on -one just a few minutes later, but this time we get it right. Dwight McNeil, the new Toffee, makes it 2-1-1. Uh, sorry, one -one. We're back on level terms. And in a game where I dominated, I couldn't believe I was only on level terms. I should have been two or three goals up. A few minutes later, Rack Saki, basically from kickoff, rolled through Eduard. Sanchez picks it up. But man, oh man, goalkeeper distribution in this year's FIFA is abysmal. We all know it. We all know it. Goalkeeper distribution is so poor. Goalkeepers make so many mistakes in this year's FIFA, and particularly their distributions at times, is absolutely abysmal. Robert Sanchez trying to throw it out wide, can only pick out a Brett Gize, controls it on the chest, and volleys it in to the open goal. A gift from Sanchez as we turn the game on its head and win on the South Coast. Final score, Brighton 1, Palace 2. Two goals in three minutes, and our great run of form continues. Fantastic start in the cup. We're into the last 16. Made a men's in the Europa League winning big in Cyprus and in the Premier League, well, on the back of the big win there against Brighton and free straight for Crystal Palace. Don't look now, but the Eagles are currently sitting top of the Premier League. Yep, long way to go, only eight games in, top scorers taking nothing for granted, but what a fantastic start for Crystal Palace. Question is, how long can we keep it going? But that winning today's episode of the Realistic Summer Karima, guys. Big fan of you for watching. If you have enjoyed it, and if you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. I really hope this pain goes away soon. And I'll see you for the next episode of the Realistic Summer Career Mode very soon.